Okay. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are listening in from. My name is Wally Olopate with Right Side Trading. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to Dave, Anka, all you guys from Time and Research uh, to have us back again. That's really cool. Uh, really love collaborating with you guys. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad to be here, share what I know, what I've been doing. So again, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me back. Okay. Um, very quickly, our risk disclosure and this, uh, this uh, disclaimer statement. Uh, what I like to just tell people is look, by law, we need to let people know that we are not licensed financial advisors. Now, just because we're not licensed financial advisors doesn't mean we don't know what we're doing, but we do need to let you know that. And so for that reason, full disclosure, I have no license when it comes to this. Uh, all I'm simply doing is just sharing with you what has helped me um, figure out the market and do extremely well in the market. And my goal here is just to show you, educate you on what I do with the hopes that maybe you will see something that grabs your attention, something that you can then take home research, apply to your own way of investing and trading and just take it from there. Okay. So, but nothing we talk about here is a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold. Uh, but I will show you what we do personally uh, with our own trading and investing. Make sense? Okay, so today actually I want to talk about seasonality. Now, seasonality is nothing new at all. The only thing that we the, that we I believe we did differently is that um, we figured out a way to tell when seasonality is actually going to work versus seasonality that is not going to work. And so if anybody's ever traded seasonality and you've ever ran into this problem of, hey, I understand the concept of seasonality, but you know, just because it's worked 10 times in the last 10 years doesn't guarantee it's going to work this time. How do I know it's actually going to work again this year? That was the biggest question I had, okay? Because I was the guy where the first time I heard about seasonality was in 2014 and it made complete sense to me, right? And I remember the guy telling, oh, Google goes up every October. And I just remember uh, when Google came around, I said, okay, now I have so many questions that when should I start buying? How long do I hold on to the position for? Um, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then I got into it and I actually lost money. And so uh, it was one of those years that it didn't do what it usually used to do. So I thought, wow, just my luck that all these years, the trade has been working, but as soon as Wally gets in, it decides it's not going to work. Can anybody relate to what I'm talking about? Because that is a true experience that I'm sharing with you guys, the challenge that I faced, okay? And so as my knowledge of the market started increasing, as my understanding and my research started taking place, I wanted to answer that question because I really like the concept of seasonality, but I was like, until I can figure out how to overcome these questions, I will keep on doing research. And I am glad to say that all my research has led to what I am about to present to you today, which I think is really, really cool and makes seasonality uh, superbly something that anybody who's serious about trading should include in their strategies. Make sense? All right. Okay, so um, let's do this. The, to give you a background story of how I got to this point and why I'm sharing what I'm sharing with you guys is that um, I heard an interview about this gentleman right here. I'm not sure if anybody knows who he is. His name is Jim Simons, okay? Jim Simons, I've been talking about Jim Simons for years now. Uh, Jim Simons, to me, is who I credit my success to in the stock market. Now, Jim Simons doesn't know who I am, doesn't even know I exist or anything like that, but I watched interviews of Jim Simons, and I was very intrigued because of one particular thing that Jim Simons says, and that was, he said, the stock market is not random. Now, when I heard that, and I heard why he believed the stock market was not random, if anybody knows his story... Uh, quick background, Jim Simons is a guy who um, is a mathematician. Uh, he was a professor. He worked for NASA and all kinds of stuff. Uh, he did some code 
break in for the military and everything, right? And then he decided to take his math because he realized that math it is, isn't everything, kind of like Fibonacci. Anybody who's heard about the Fibonacci? So when uh, Nada Fibonacci discovered that the Fibonacci sequence isn't everything, well, Jim Simons kind of figured out the same thing that math applies to everything in life. And so he decided to take his knowledge and apply it to the stock market. And he used math to figure out patterns in the market. And so he then hired a bunch of mathematicians, PhD students math, in, in math. He hired some physicists and some statisticians. The one requirement was they could not know anything about the stock market. He just wanted them to be number geeks and just focus on you know, science behind it. Long story short, they created a model, which till today is a very secretive model, so much so that um, anybody that works for him has to sign this non-disclosure agreement for life, that they cannot reveal what they know. But needless to say, Jim Simons, in the process of him building this model, the biggest thing they wanted to do was use math, physics, and statistics to figure out patterns in the market. And so in essence, what they were doing was what is called quantitative analysis, okay? So you've heard about technical analysis, fundamental analysis, but this case, it was uh, uh, quantitative analysis. And so it's using math, physics, and statistics to figure out patterns in the market. All that being said, he created this big model, became a multi-billionaire. And in his whole experience, he, up, he kept on coming back and saying, look, the one thing we realized was that the market was not random. He doesn't do any fundamental analysis whatsoever. He doesn't look at the news. It's just simply numbers and patterns and numbers that he picks out and he made billions of dollars doing this, okay? And so that was enough. That was the, the ignition that sparked my curiosity. It's like, wow, if Jim Simons, because I, I was already beginning to believe that too, that I don't believe that this is random because after all, even with the algorithms and the high frequency trading and everything, it's people behind them. You know, everything is programmed and a computer cannot do anything that a human doesn't program it to do. So a computer is just an extension of a human behavior. Does that make sense? And when I look at the market, I was beginning to believe that. And then when I heard Jim Simons say this, I was like, wow. That makes so much sense. And so I decided to go out and search for patterns that I could find knowing, because uh, I have you know, a, a pretty good background in numbers, uh, finance, I studied accounting in college, um, all that stuff. So I said, let me use this to kind of see if I can discover some patterns in the market. And so one of the things Jim Simons would say is that patterns of price are not random. However, they are close enough to random. So even though it might seem like, wow, this happened out of the blue, he does not believe that it's, you know, random. He believes everything happens for a reason. There's a pattern behind it. So much so that he said, we search through historical data looking for patterns that we do not expect. Keyword, we would not expect to occur at random. So in essence, what he's basically saying is, if, he, if anything happens in random, if, it, if it's a random event in the market, he wants nothing to do with it. And that, to me, was just, wow, okay? Because then I realized, look, I don't have to trade everything out there. I don't have to worry about what's random. What I need to focus on are the things that occur in patterns. Does that make sense? And I don't know anything else that is more pattern-like than seasonality, okay? Which I think is why it intrigued me the very first time, but I just didn't understand certain nuances to it that now I have now figured out, tightened that up, and has done really, really well with seasonality. Does that make sense? So if you're somebody who's never heard of seasonality, let me just briefly explain what seasonality is, because seasonality is so simple um, and, and for those of you guys who already know, just bear with me as I just give this very quick description of what seasonality is. A good example of seasonality is what's happening right now. We're heading into the holidays. We have Thanksgiving coming up. That's a seasonal event. Now, that's different from market cycles. See, market cycles are things that happen, you know, every so often. Seasonality is something that happens once, at least the way we define it once every year, okay? So it happens once a year, that's seasonality. If something happens, occur, occurs over and over and over again within a short period of time, that's just cycles. Ups and downs are cycles. 
But seasonality is something that happens annually in the way we look at it, but it happens over and over and over. So right now, next week, by the way, happy Thanksgiving in advance. Next week is Thanksgiving. That's a seasonal event. After that, we come into the holidays in December. Then we have Christmas. That's a seasonal event. If you go into Walmart right now, they understand seasonality. Why? Because if you go into Walmart right now, the first thing you're going to see, the biggest display they're going to have are Christmas stuff. I thought it was funny because they didn't even display anything about Thanksgiving this time around. It was straight to Christmas. They bypassed Thanksgiving altogether and went straight to the whole Christmas decoration, right? We went to the mall the other day and we saw all the props in one of the garage uh, uh, um, uh, parking lots at the mall. So that tells me that they are getting ready to install all these props for Christmas. They know the season is here, okay? And so what I taught my kids, I have a seven-year-old and a 10-year-old, and I'm teaching them, I homeschool them, and, I, and one of their courses is they have to learn about the markets, the stock market. And so when they were taking their stock market classes, I told them, I said, seasonality, it's like a birthday. Like just like all their friends and everybody in their family has a birthday. I say, every stock has a season. The question is, do we know when this season occurs? When is that birthday? And so with my kids, I just sort of look, three things I want you guys to remember. Number one is when is the stock's birthday, okay? So they like going and, and they, they invest and trade in stocks that they spend money on. So they like going to Walmart, they like going to Target, they like going to Dollar General, uh, they like going to Best Buy, they like going to Dunkin' Donuts. So those places, well, not Dunkin' Donuts anymore, but uh, when Dunkin' Donuts used to be publicly traded, they used to you know, invest in that. But the idea was, I told them, I said, you got to figure out when is their seasonality? When is that birthday? So they know that, right? And they say seven and 10 years old, they already know that. So said, when is their seasonality? So they know that when that seasonality time comes. And I said, the next thing is to find out if they are making money. And basically what that simply means is, is it bullish and ready to go higher or is it bearish? Okay. If they're making money, to them, that's bullish. If they're not making money, it's bearish. So they have an idea of whether they should be invested or they should be not. And the third thing is, are you invited to come and buy? Are you invited to come by? You know, so it's a, it's a play in words, but it's like, are you invited to come by with this stock? Three things is all they have to do. Okay. And so um, that's an idea of what seasonality is. Come February, one of the seasonal patterns that everybody celebrates around the world is Valentine's Day. So this happens over and over and over. Even with COVID, people still celebrate Valentine's. Even with COVID, people still celebrate Thanksgiving. It might have been modified, but they celebrated it. Even with COVID, they celebrate Christmas. So seasonality is something that occurs over and over and over again. You don't have to overthink it. It's just that. Does that make sense? But why is it that people are not so successful in it? And that's kind of like what we have tried to discover. So our software that we built was created to help us do one thing, kind of like what I showed you guys earlier before, and that is to improve my success ratio with seasonality trading. Because like I said, I was the guy, when I first heard about it, would jump in. And when I jumped in was the year it decided, and then I would dismiss it. And then two, three years later, I'll come back and I find it that, wow, it worked every other time since then, except for that one time that I got in, I was discouraged, didn't trade it, come back later and it worked. So I said, never again, there's something to these seasonality. And just because it failed one year or maybe two years, doesn't mean that it's over. The question is what would have told me not to get involved, okay? So the reason why this software is so needed because like I said, if you've ever struggled with seasonality, missing out on good ones, exiting too early, that's another thing too. Because there were trades where I jumped into the question of not knowing how long I'm supposed to stay in that trade. And so it was doing well for a little bit. I got so excited, got nervous that I might lose it, sold everything only to find out that, wow, I sold way too early. And then most importantly, do I even know if this is going to work or not? And so the whole thing about this software was to solve one problem, which is, is the seasonal pattern going to repeat itself again, okay? If you can know that, wow, I know a stock that has a seasonal pattern moving this week, 
and I can see all the signs that existed before that tells me the same things that happened is beginning to happen again now, why would you not buy it, okay? And then if you had something to guide you along the way that said, hey, wait a second, it's now beginning to filter out or wither out or fail, get out, why would you not want to take advantage of that, okay? And that's kind of like what we did here. So let me give you an example of one of the stocks that we actually literally just did this about last week, last couple of weeks. Uh, we did this with this stock called Ford Air Corp. Okay. Now, most people might not have heard of a company like this. And I like that. I like the fact that people haven't heard about some of these stocks because, you know, where the media tends to cause volatility in certain stocks, right? Because of the fact that they cover it. And then every time the media covers something, you have the yin and the yang. You have the bullish side and you have the bearish side. Some people say, oh, because the media covered it, oh, I got to go short it. And other people say, because the media covered it, I got to go buy it. And so, by the way, one of the things we try to encourage over here at Right Side Trading is that we don't want to follow the news, okay? We want to get in before the news cover it or just get in absent of what the news says, okay? We want to see clear data patterns, just like Jim Simon says, we want to see patterns that tells us this is why it's working. So here's Forward Corp. And let me show you what it did in 2016. You'll see here that in October, okay, so from October all the way to the end of November, beginning of December, what you see is that this stock rallies in price. Okay, so in 2016, this thing went up 20% from October all the way up. Now, we knew about this, and so this October, we were getting ready for it as well. Um, in 2017, it struggled, but it still yielded a 6% return on the stock, 2018, during the same time period, didn't do too much. This is, and when I say too much, I'm talking about, this is not like the cryptocurrency that everybody's fascinated about right now. Because, oh, I'm looking for the home run. I'm looking for the ones that are gonna make 2000% returns. That's not what this did here. All this simply did was, hey, it moved, it made 12%, boom, right? 2019. It moved 18%. 2020, during the same time period, 2020 was when we were locked down with COVID, right? Did the exact same thing and produce a 26% return. So the question was, is it going to do it again in 2021, which is this past October? So here's where we were looking for this and say, wow, 2021, let's see what happens. And so on October 22nd, right? And this is now... Going into, give me one second, please. Let me take a cup of water. Okay, I'm back. October 22nd, this is now where we say to ourselves, look, um, when should we start getting into this? Should we get in on the first? Should we get in on the second? Should we get in on the 15th? When should we be doing this? And so we have a report that we call the Right Side Report. And in that report, we wrote, this stock finally gave us our buy signal, okay? and the timing could not be more perfect. This stock has a history of rallying in the fourth quarter started in October or early November. However, with the right model giving us a buy signal, now you might not know what the right model is, I'll get into that pretty soon. The right model, which is the model that we created to help us with all this seasonality stuff, is now giving us a buy signal in October. And we said what? We do not believe that this is happening by chance. So we were able to wait until the weekend of October 22nd. It says, yes, we now see the same patterns that we've seen. The software has been able to go back, take all the quantitative data and look at it and say, yep, the same thing is now happening again. Okay. Part of the seasonality that we knew that we were looking at was this chart right here, which also comes with a platform. And what we see here is this yellow line that shows us, hey, this thing is supposed to go up. This was in October right here. And we could see this green section here, this whole green section here is telling us that um, if you notice that we had candlesticks all the way up to, up to this candle right here, this is the last candle. So that was the most recent candle. And what it's doing now is projecting what it has done in the past 10 years during the next six months. Does that make sense? 
So it's letting us know here in the last 10 years from this time and this time, which is a six month period, this is what has happened to that stock. All right. And then we program the algorithm to tell us, give us the most consistent, most consistent, not the most profitable, not, not the most profitable, but the most consistent. Okay. That was what we were looking for. The most consistent rally is what we wanted. We didn't care whether the most consistent rally was only 1% or whether it was 100%. The key was we wanted to find when is the most consistent rally. Now, does anybody have an idea of why we are focused more on the, the consistent as opposed to the profit? Okay, because at the end of the day, to me, I figured that if I can know something that is consistent, by the way, if, you know, if I had to choose between the most profit and the most consistent, I want to go with the most consistent because I can do something with that. Even if I know it's only 1%, 5%, 10%, I have a better idea of what I can do with this. Does that make sense? And so right here, it tells us on average, we can get a 10% move on average out of this stock consistently during this period of time. And so that's why when we're writing this, we say, look, we don't believe that this setup that typically happens starting in October, maybe early November, is now telling us that it's time to buy. And we know this is the most consistent rally that this is going to have in the next six months. Type in a yes if this is making sense. I, I want to make sure that people understand this. Like a lot of people are very quiet. Just to help me out here, making sure that I understand people get what I'm talking about here, right? I want to see the most consistent rally. Thank you guys, appreciate that. I'm not looking for the home run. I just wanna get, if you understand the logic of baseball or the concept of baseball, I'm not looking to hit home runs. All I want is to get to first base. Does that make sense, Pete? I just wanna get to first base. And so that's why we program this. This is a very conservative approach, but it's very consistent. If you understand the wisdom behind consistency, you will love what we've created. If you're looking for the home runs, this might not be it for you. I'm just gonna be honest with you. But if you're looking for consistency, and we have found something that is so consistent, we can tell when it's ready to go, when it is not. So we knew that this was the most consistent time of the year for this stock, at least not maybe not time of the year, but the most consistent rally in the next six months. And it's happening right around the time that we knew that this stock typically goes up. And so that's why we wrote about that, okay? So here's that same chart. I mark these things because I want you guys to see, here's a price chart. We came back from the season hour. This is the signal right here that told us, yes, it is time to do what? Time to buy, okay? No guessing, no hoping, no wishing, okay? This is not a hunch. We didn't look at the news. It didn't matter what was going on. We just knew, look, this stock has this ability to move around this period of time, the data, the data is showing that this is ready to go. And that's why you hear me say over and over and over, the stock market is not random. So this is what the chart looked like, right? When we wrote that report, this is where we got the signal saying, yes, the same seasonal pattern is beginning to occur. This stock literally went to all time highs from that point on. You think that that was coincidence? We don't. When it happened and the media never said anything about it, we were happy about it, okay? I mean, we were totally happy about that. And 100 shares of this would have yielded about a $1,600 return. Looks like a home run to you, Jones. <laughs> hey, you know, if all I'm trying to do is get to first base and I get lucky and hit a home run, you think I'm upset about that? You think I'm saying, oh, this thing doesn't work. No, right? 
hey, I'm okay if it gives us home runs, but that's not what we're aiming for. Does that make sense? That, that's, that's, that's my whole thing. We're like, we're not aiming for home runs. We wanted how much, do you guys recall how much it said that we should expect on average from this move once we got our buy signal? Does anybody recall what the percentage was? Nobody? Let's go back here. See this right here? What did it say? 10% right there. You might have to tilt your head sideways, but 10%. Is what it says. So look, you can get 10% of this. So if you knew, wow, and it tells you approximately how many days in 20 days. So that's in a month. In one month, making 10%. If somebody is okay making 10% on the stocks move, this has nothing to do with leverage whatsoever. But just on the stocks move, a 10% on that move, is that something you find interesting? If 10% is too small for you in a month on one stock, I get that. But if you say, wait a second, consistently, you know, guessing I can get 10% on this and I can plan this out because this is just October. I can do November. I can do December. I can do January. Every single month, I know which stocks I'm going to get into before the month even comes up. This is what we do here at Right Side Trading. The options on this for those who like trading options, okay? If you traded options on this, one contract would have cost you $520. That same move of 10% in the stock yielded a 241% return on your options. Simply by knowing the stock market does not have to be random 10 percent okay well in this case it did 18 percent here's another example bloom energy okay bloom energy was actually brought to me by one of our subscribers he said wally you got to take a look at this stock i think i'm missing something i think my numbers are off and i said well let's sit down and take a look at it so we took a look at the stock and at the time before he gave us this buy signal this is what he showed me. He said, hey, I've been following this stock and it has a pattern of moving up from October to January, maybe even up until February. I said, okay, what's the big deal about that? He said, is my eyes deceiving me? Because I see on average 129%. And I said, oh, well, uh, let's go check this out. So we went back and because even I, I did not know anything about the stock, I'll be honest, you know. So I went back, I looked at that, I said, wow, we, 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 we did some manual calculations, did all kinds of stuff, saying, yep. And I said, you know what? Um, this stock has the ability to move 120% easily. Now, the only difference was that you had to wait to the end of December, maybe January. But I told him, I said, this was in October when we saw this. It's like, yeah, if you buy this in October and you cash out in December for 100%, that's just three months. I was like, wow. I said, do you want to do it? He said, oh, yeah. That's why I'm bringing it to your attention, Molly. So I said, all right. So I like this so much that even I decided to get involved in it. Okay. And all that was was simply because we saw what? The buy signal. Can you see this right here? This was a buy signal. We saw that. What ended up happening to this stock is this was when we first started buying. This was the second time we bought. Just like that. And because we saw the buy signal went up to a six month high, the highest it's been in six months, simply because we knew that this stock moved in October and goes all the way to January. We knew that it was gonna have fluctuations up and down. So we had to decide, I said, look, how do you wanna do this? Do you wanna do it where, you know, when it goes up and it starts pulling back, you sell, or do you just wanna hold on to the end of December? And he said, look, I'm holding on to the end of December. And that's what we did. Okay, trades like that, very consistent, didn't have to think, no hoping, no wishing. That stock is up 70%. It's pulled back a little bit. It's now going through that pullback phase, which is like, okay, great. But because of what we know about this, was like, look, it's going to turn around again and go higher. This is what this stock does. And so right before it pulled back this week, it started pulling back yesterday, uh, I think on Friday. 
right before it started pulling back, it was already up 70%. And we talking about getting into this like late October. The options on this, 303%. Let me show you something here. Let me just go, let's go live. Let's go to something that is happening right now, you know, so that I showed you two examples in the past. There's a whole lot I can show you, but I don't have much time to do it. But I want to show you something that we are literally working on right now. So let me do this. Give me one second. I'm going to open up this file here because I think I should show you this. Uh, give me one second. Um, the stock that, well, the instrument, I should say, that we're going to be talking about is uh, none other than GLD. Um, you know, David said earlier, I was on the call yesterday, the podcast yesterday, and I was, they were asking me, they said, hey, Wally, you know, you, you're a quantitative guy. Uh, what do you have in your arsenal? What are you looking at? And stuff like that. And I said, well, guys, I said, look, you know, actually the guys, uh, the, the panelists that we talked about all talking about gold and, you know, they had different, you know, uh, analysis and all that kind of stuff. So when it came to my turn, I just said, it's, it's simple, seasonality, okay? Gold tends to go up around this time. Now, let me show you guys this. This is, uh, the, this is the right side report that we write. And I wanna show you here, this is the right side report that we wrote on November 5th. So that was like literally two weeks ago. And I said right here, I said, gold has not been kind to us over the last year. So we tried this last year, gold was not, we didn't make any money because gold was not giving us the signal that it was time to buy. And so we were able to avoid the catastrophe that gold went through last year. I said, but once again, the data is showing that there's some buying taking place that should not be ignored. The seasonal move in gold and gold stocks usually begins in November and the right model showing us a buy signal now. We're looking to take advantage of that. That was two weeks ago. I want to show you this. Last week, this was literally, I wrote this over the weekend, this past weekend. We are starting this section of the report when we talk about stock sectors and industries. We're starting this section of the report with gold because last week we saw enough data that suggested seasonality in gold and gold stock begins in November. The right model gave us a buy signal as well. Uh, and gold has begun rallying as expected. If the seasonal pattern works all the way through, and I'll explain what I mean by that, we should see gold rally with fluctuations from now until January, 2022. And so on the call yesterday, I didn't, you know, I didn't show them this part, but I'm showing this to you guys. On the call yesterday, when they say, hey, what do you think? And I told them, I said, guys, I said, let me put it this way. Back in August, I was on a podcast like this, and I told him, GBTC, Bitcoin is ready to rally to all-time highs. I said, anybody who does not get involved, same as Tesla. I said, Tesla, GBTC, I said, they are ready to go higher. I said, even to the point of maybe all-time high. I said, if people do not get in now, they're going to regret it later. And so when the host was asking me yesterday, I said the same thing again. I said, look, you remember when I talked about GBTC and I talked about Tesla? He's like, yeah, 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 I remember that. I said, well, now I'm talking about gold, okay? These things are not happening at random. I said, the data that we have is now showing us that something is happening in gold. And so that's why we wrote about it two weeks ago, okay? We wrote about it again this past week. And I'm saying, not because we're guessing, hoping, and wishing, but because we're getting what? Buy signals. This is what the right model is like. We know that gold is ready to go higher, okay? Now, let me show you this. This is how we know gold is ready to go higher. I'm going to bring over the seasonal chart of GLD. Here's the platform, the right side platform, okay? And here's the season. We have the price chart. We have the seasonality chart. Here's the price chart. Let me do this. Here's a price chart. We can look at daily. We can look at weekly. We can look at monthly, right? And then here's the seasonal chart. And that's what we've seen here. Here's what I want you guys to see. This is where gold is as of yesterday, November 15. We are expecting this move. Can you guys see this? Everybody see this? This, 
is what we expect. So we know it starts somewhere in November, goes up, pulls back, and then goes higher. You guys seen this? Okay, so there's a up, down, and up. That's what we expect to happen in gold. This has happened over and over and over and over and over again. And so that's why in the report that I wrote, uh, let's go back here, where's the report? Uh, in the report that I wrote, I said, we should see gold rally with what? With fluctuations. People are like, well, how do you know these things? It's like, look, I, I don't consider myself a fortune teller. All we're doing is interpreting the data that is there. Okay. And what this is showing us is that in the past, gold will start beginning in November, pull back. Some of it is steeper, some of it is you know, shallow pullbacks. But there's going to be some fluctuations in between. But between now and by January, this thing is higher. This is what we're looking for. Okay. So then we come over here, this button right here that says future seasonality scan only. So what this is where we say, okay, in the next six months, starting today, and you know, this is end of day data. So we have yesterday, the 15th. It says starting on the 15th, November 15th, going forward. And actually, we did that way, you know, back then because we were looking at this two weeks ago. It said going forward, since we knew November was when it starts, I said going forward, when is the most consistent, that's the keyword again, the most consistent rally in gold. When does that take place? All we do is simply click over here. And we can see here that the most consistent rally takes place somewhere around here. So here's the thing. We know that gold is getting ready to go up, but we also know we're going to encounter some type of turbulence along the way. But starting around this time here, which is like in about what, two, two and a half weeks from now, the consistent rally to the end of the year begins with gold. Does that make sense? So I'm looking at all this and I said, okay, good. That's good information to know. We can either wait to December, right? And bypass the fluctuations, or we can get in now and just look, we'll handle, we'll deal, we'll ride out the fluctuations. But does that help you in understanding, wow, how do we attack and approach the market? So if gold starts fluctuating, where other people might start panicking, oh my gosh, it's about to fall out of the sky. We say, nope, it's just turbulence that we expect to happen. I'll never forget, I used to be so afraid of flying because I had a near death accident when I was serving in the military going to um, um, uh, Guatemala, right? And uh, we were gonna, we were on a deployment to go help uh, humanitarian efforts in Guatemala. Long story short, you know, I was in the army, a bunch of us with ammunition everything on there. And we encountered turbulence like I've never seen before. And the plane just dropped. And that flash of that drop, I just knew my life was over because I was like, oh my goodness. You know, I said, if this thing crashes, we're not going to survive. With all the ammo we had, there's just no way we're going to survive. And I just, I mean, it, it, it dropped for like at least eight seconds. And I'm just like, this is it. My life is over. This is how I'm going to die. And all I could think about was my family, which is very interesting, right? Not the money, not anything else, but just my family. The only thing I think about was my, my family, which is why I spend so much time with my family now. Um, but anyways, the plane called itself. And I remember we landed safely in Guatemala. Boy, I got out. Everybody got out. Soldiers, you could see men crying, kissing the ground and everything, right? And so I had anxiety every time I get on a plane ever since then. But I remember this one pilot helped me, you know? I was one of those where, I mean, for the longest time, I wouldn't take a plane, I would drive, but I had to get on a plane because I was flying out of the country. And um, he said, okay, this is what the flight itinerary is gonna look like. We're going from Boston to Florida. And he said, look, when we fly over to North Carolina, it's gonna be very bumpy. He said, I'm gonna let you guys know about 10 minutes before we get there, that is gonna be bumpy. We'll put the seatbelt sign on, don't panic, you know, but make sure that everything is tucked away because this is just what we're gonna be expecting. He said, it should last for about five minutes and then we should be good for the rest of the flight. Man, you know, that was the best thing this pilot did. Like that guy literally, I mean, I never got to meet him. I never got to thank him, but he helped me overcome my fears. And the reason why is because I started trusting in the fact that they had tools that could tell them 
this was about to happen. And so sure enough, 10 minutes before we got over the uh, Carolina mountains, he announced it, put on the seatbelt, everybody sat down, even the air hostesses, and then the bumpiness happened. But you know what? While that whole bumpiness was taking place, I was calm. Unlike before where I'd be hyperventilating, I would have had to get a bag and start breathing through the bag. And I didn't have to do that this time. And it was simply because this pilot had forewarned us that this was going to happen. It happened for about five minutes. And just like he said, he took the fastest seatbelt sign off and it was a smooth sailing for the rest of the flight. And I got down on that plane from that point on. I said, you know what? I do not need to be afraid of flying anymore. That guy cured me from my fears of flying. I hope that I can do the same with you. If you have fears of trading, fears of investing, fears of I don't know which stock to get into, I don't know when to sell, I don't know when to buy, this is what this tool has done for me. And it's helping so many of our students do the same thing too. So now I'm looking at gold and I'm saying, look, we are going to encounter turbulence between now and the beginning of December. And then after that, it should be smooth sailing. So you can either wait to December to jump in, or if you jump in like we have now, just know that, look, there is going to be a bumpy ride until the first week of December. Does that make sense? And I mean, I'm not making this up. This has happened over and over again. And so then now to make things even more exciting, I go back here to the chart. This is where we got our first buy signal, which is what made me say it's time to buy. This is on the daily chart, right? On November 5th, I say it's time to buy gold. It's happening. This rally that we've seen in gold recently is not a surprise to me. Some people are saying, well, it's stalling. Is it going to fall back? Are we going to do anything? I'm saying, yeah, we're going to encounter that. But what they're not realizing is what's going to happen after we pass that bumpy ride. Does that make sense? And so now I come over here to the weekly chart. And you know the weekly chart is even telling us what's going to happen over a longer duration of time. And if I zoom in right here to the weekly chart, look at what it did. First, it said, okay, this is October. It's like, oh, get ready. Long stop exit is short. And again, I don't have time to explain all this, but again, when you, if, you, if you end up coming to our analysis room that I'm going to offer you guys later on today, um, you'll see and how I explain all this stuff. Right here, it says, be insured. At this point, this was last week when it says it's time to start buying. And I'm saying this is the weekly chart. So even the bigger time frame is saying, wow, things are even looking bigger for weeks to come. Then I want to show you guys this. This just happened on the monthly chart, which is now even a bigger picture. And I'm saying OMG. I said this the other day, OMG. I said, what does OMG stand for? And then it stands for, let me write this down. It stands for Oh My Gold. Oh My Gold. OMG. So now the monthly chart is telling us buy. Do you know what this means? What this simply means is that, wow, for the next few months, at least the next couple of months, we can see higher prices in gold. So I'm looking at this now. I'm just like, I don't have to guess, hope, or wish. I know there's going to be bumpy rides, but guess what? The mere fact that these time frames are all telling me to buy now, using this right model that we created, I know things are about to happen for gold. That makes sense. And the funny thing is, along the way, if we start running into problems, okay. What would happen is each day, it would let us know the right model. I want you to gaze your eyes on this right model here. It would tell us what to do. So from here, it says wait and hold simply means don't buy, don't sell, just hold on to your positions. Wait and hold, wait and hold, wait and hold, wait and hold, wait and hold. So every single day, rather than panicking, I can just come back at the end of the day and I know what to do. If it tells me to place a stop, I will place a stop. If it tells me to get out, I will get out. If it tells me to get insurance and insure myself, I know what to do. I'm not flying blind anymore. And you do not have to either. 
Okay, so I'm running out of time. Let me do this. Go back here. Here's another example of um, Ford that we talked about on October 1st. Last week, this great American company gave us a buy signal on its weekly time frame. Ford has the ability to rally about another 15% or more over the next two months. Now, mind you, we wrote this at the beginning of October. We would like to see the daily chart of Ford have a close above Friday's high or a new buy signal before jumping in. We got that buy signal the very next day. Anybody go back and take a look at Ford and you will see that it went to new highs. Not making this up. Here is Bitcoin that I was talking about. This is what we saw when I said this back in August. I say, wow, the fact that the monthly chart is telling us that we now have a buy signal tells us that, and this is when I was on that call and I said, look, anybody who does not buy Bitcoin is going to regret it. Why? Because this is what is done. And everybody knows recently, Bitcoin has done pretty well, hitting new all-time highs and everything. Simply because data that repeats itself was happening again and again and again. No guessing, no hoping or wishing, just follow data. Any questions? Any questions? Now, if you have questions, by all means, ask questions. If not, let me show you what my offer is. Here's my offer. I want to invite you to come and use this right side platform. You can purchase a 30 day uh, uh, um, option or a 90 day access to this. It's up to you. You know, these are the two options that we made available. What you'll get is that you'll get the tutorial that comes along with it, how to use it, what each one of these things says and all that kind of stuff, right? What I'm also gonna throw in there as part of the bonus to kind of help you is my right side report. You saw what I talked about in the right side report, as well as the invitation to come to what we call analysis room. We don't call it trading room because we don't trade in there. All we do is analysis because all the analysis that we do are done after the market closes. So this is something we, you know, we do market closes every Monday. Uh, we have uh, an analysis on the market as well as stocks. So we encourage people, bring your stocks, let's do analysis. We call it analysis room. And then from there, we say, okay, here's what's going on in the market. Here's what's going on with this sector. Here's what to be paying attention to. Here's some seasonality information that you should be aware of, right? And then let's plan accordingly, okay? Uh, Sal is asking, is seasonality only specific months or then months when there isn't any, for example, May is dead? Uh, not necessarily. I, I appreciate you asking that, okay? Um, what we have done, um, anybody who's heard me sometime along the way, you probably heard me say, uh, I, I, I don't like it when I hear people say, oh, the stock market is just a hobby. It's not. To me, it's a business, okay? And the reason why I say it's a business is because I realize that just like any business, you can apply the same concept, the same principles of being successful in business, you can apply it to the stock market. When I look at stocks, especially with seasonality, I look at them as customers. Does that make sense? I look at them as customers. And if you had a business, one of the things that you want to do from the very get-go is go find customers, right? So you do all your marketing, that, 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 why? So you can find customers. Well, one of the beauty of this is there's stocks every single month that you can scan for to find seasonality. Does that make sense? Every single month that you can find for seasonality. Matter of fact, um, I'm gonna show you something um, as far as that is concerned. So remind me, Sal, before I leave, I'm gonna show you uh, one of the scans we just ran this weekend. We run our scans every single weekend just to refresh everything and say, hey, any new seasonality that's popping up each and every week, okay? So that's that. All right, um, it's important that you are aware of this. Let me just do this. This is the pricing, 147 per month or 247 if you buy for the quarter. The offer ends this Sunday. Go to this uh, link right here, rightsidetrading.com forward slash promotion without the S, promotion. You'll be able to get access to that, okay? Um, 
Jones is saying, how long does a stock or crypto need to be in the market for this method to work, specifically with crypto, since many of these currencies are out there only um, been in this space for about a year? Very good question. So we at least need two, maybe three years. Does that make sense, Jones? At least two to three years, because you have nothing to compare it to. You need something to compare it to. Does that make sense? So the minimum is two, two years, because if it does it one year, uh, we can go about that and just hope that it does it again the next time. And that's the one thing we don't want to do. We don't want hoping. Does that make sense? We don't, like I said, we don't hope, we don't wish, you know, we don't think or feel. We want to see data. So I tell people, look, sometimes there's just enough, there's not enough data. Okay. And that's okay. There's other ways we can trade it. It's just that you cannot, you know, get the best out of seasonality strategies and data from something like that. But the thing is, there's many other stocks that you can choose from. And that's my whole, that's the, the biggest thing I love about this is like so much out there to choose from. Let, let me show you this. Um, now that I'm on that subject, let me just do this. Hold on one second. I'm going to try to see if I can pull up my scan from this weekend, just so you can see. Uh, let's see. Uh, do, 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 do. Give me one second. I'm going to see if I can pull this up for you. I wasn't thinking about pulling it up, but since we're here and you guys are interested, let me show you something. Now, I'm going to show you this, and please, by no means, should anybody go out there and start trading this without having a platform, okay? Because uh, I, I don't want you guys jumping into something that you don't know what you're doing. Does that make sense? Uh, let me see here. Give me one second. I'm going to pull this up. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Any other questions, by the way? Let's see here. Uh, one second, almost here. One second, one second. Where's this thing? Oh, wrong one. Give me a second. I'll pull this up pretty soon. But yeah, so <clears throat> uh, let's see. Anyway, so at the end of the day, that's one of the things that you'll get while I'm pulling this up. Just give you, let me talk about the other stuff. The right side report. Uh, anybody who knows this knows that everything we try to do is analyze stuff based on what's going to happen. We don't like talking about analysis based on the past, okay? Uh, we don't use hindsight trading. Um, we call ourselves right side trading because the idea is that we want to see things going forward into the future. Makes sense. And so one of the things that we do is that we write this report in hopes that we have an idea of what is going to be happening. And when the pandemic hit, this was our report. When the right side platform was telling us, get out, get out, get out. We were shocked. It's like, why is it telling us to get out so bad? Uh, long story short, this was right before the pandemic. So we actually wrote about this on June, on January 24th. Now, if anybody knows, the, the market fell out in February of last year. But in January 24th, about two, three weeks before, we were seen, and this is why I said the market is not random. What people thought was, oh, it just happened on that one day and it started jumping, uh, it started falling. There were signs that uh, distribution was beginning to take place prior to that, like weeks prior to that, almost as if the big money were positioning themselves and ready for what was about to happen. And that's why I totally believe the market is not random. Uh, long story short, we, we, we warned people uh, one of the best things I always try to point out is this part right here, where it says, oops, the writing is already on the wall. Look at this. The writing is already on the wall. It is time to take profit, exit positions. The market is wanting us to take heed. This is literally what we wrote and warned all our subscribers, get out, get out, get out before this, whatever is about to happen. We didn't know it was going to be COVID, but we knew something wasn't right. The market dropped. Two months later, we started seeing something on March 27th. It says, wait, have we hit bottom? Is it possible? Because at that point in time, I mean, unemployment rate was to the roof. I mean, people were like all over the place. Like the market was down. Businesses were shut down. The whole world was shut down. And all of a sudden, the platform was showing us the wait a second, it's time to start buying. I was like, nah, that can't be. And I said in that report, I said, the answer is, is, just a, is this just a relief rally or is this something really to pay attention to? 
And the answer was the market is com communicating that it is time to cover all our short positions, exit all your short positions and get ready for a rally. And I won't lie, even I was hesitant because of how bad everything was. I said, this can't be, maybe there's something wrong with the calculations and the platform. But then after two weeks on March, on April 6th, we started buying. And we literally started buying April 6th. And that was because we hesitated because we were engulfed with what was happening around us. And I had to shake that off by April 6th and say, no, follow the data. And the data led us back to all time highs. And I literally watched as week after week, month after month, people were in denial that this market was gonna make it back. And I'm like, wow, we have something really unique here. And then the NASDAQ made all-time highs and people said, oh, that's just the NASDAQ. And then the S&P made all-time highs. And I said, okay, it's just the NASDAQ and the S&P. But at the time the Dow and the Russell did it, the doubt turned into frustration and they started blaming all the rich people and all the Wall Street people for being greedy. Like why is the market at all-time highs while the economy had not recovered? And it was at that point that I realized, oh, and G, people are not paying attention to data that counts. They were all looking at the wrong data. People were looking at unemployment rates, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff. And it's like, that's the wrong data. And I'm so happy that we have something that helps us see the true data. So one of these people written before saying, look, everything that's happening in the market right now, I saw it coming last week. Okay. This is a report we wrote just literally this year when we said, hey, the market is reaching a top. Market is ready to go down. Somebody wrote me literally this last month. You can read all this stuff, but it says right here, I want you to know that with this current bull market, I have been in the SPXL probably for the same reasons you traded earlier in your days. At this point, it is my best trade ever. I want to thank you for your patience and guidance acting as a father would his children, right? Another person wrote me. I felt compelled. I don't ask for testimony from anybody. Like literally anybody who knows me, I never ask for testimonials. This came in. I felt compelled to write you and let you know how much I got out of your last night's webinar. Today, I am like a kid in the candy store. I've been checking all of my positions with your new and improved software, eagerly waiting to record it. These are people that is like, wow, I see it. I get it. Okay. And so for the person who was asking, um, you know, do we have stocks that are going to show us? Let me show you this. Okay. Let me just show you this. This is one of our scans. Okay. And you can take screenshots if you want. But again, I encourage you, do not go out there trading anything because all these stocks are stocks that have seasonal patterns. And I want you to see this. Um, and this is just a small list, by the way. This is literally just a small list. November 9th, all these stocks. This 10 and 0 tells you that it's done it 10 times out of 10. It's going to go for 22 days, and it's going to go up by 7% on average. The question is, is it going to happen this year? And that's where the ripe model comes into play. Okay. But you can see this, all this right here, that's 22 stocks on, Jan, on, 11, uh, on November 9th. On the November 10th, you have all these stocks right here. On the November 11th, so you can find stocks for the next two weeks. And this is just like, let me just show you, this is December, January, up until April. There are stocks that you can find that will show you what is about to happen. Does that make sense? There are stock, I mean, every single week, I'm trying to find my master list. I cannot find, let me see, hold on one second. I think I know where it is now, hold on. Give me one second. Hey, Wally, sorry to cut you off, but we're- uh, Oh, we are the end, okay, no we're, worries. No we're worries at all, no worries at all. All right, guys, I'm just gonna go ahead and end it there because my time is up. Uh, let me just uh, do this again rightsidetrading.com forward slash promo. I wish I could show you more, but my time is up. If you're interested, contact us. Other than that, trade well, trade safe. God bless you all. Thank you guys so much for having me on the call today.